project is inspired by the Cartabella papers with the spring market boots and gardening motifs on. I'm showing here that I'm going to mask off the center of my paper either with a piece of card and some masking tape or I also have some masking paper that I can use for my craft making. I've left a 5 8 inch border and I have some stamps that have little flowers and some leaves on and I'm using the Ranger Tim Holtz Distress Oxide. I'm stamping first in worn lipstick and then I'm using tea dye to add a different little flower. I just wanted for these ones a border that would match the colors that I'm going to use in the paint. And then I have peel paint for the green I'm using really soft colors. I don't want them to compete with my watercolor when I do it. I want them to just enhance it. So I have some little leaf stamps. I have two different ones and I'm going to put those between the pink flowers. There I finished washing off my stamps and peeling off the masking paper and that leaves me a nice clean area to paint in. Now this is one I prepared beforehand with just green and I've done a couple of these paintings. In one of them I made the boots uh, pink with polka dots and in the other one green. Now you can use masking fluid for the polka dots and I always put soap on my brush first. I keep just one special brush for doing masking fluid. And some other tools you can use are, this is this is a little burring tool, it has a sort of a raised circle on the top. Or if you don't have something like that, you can use a toothpick to make your little polka dots. I think I preferred the brush. I tried all three and I think the brush worked best for me, a small number one brush. Now I'm mixing up sap green with a little bit of azo yellow and I'm going to start with the narcissus and I'm using a calendar photo. I've had this calendar for many years and I keep it because of all the lovely little watercolor pictures that are on the borders that I like to use. So with that sort of spring green with the sap green and the yellow I'm painting the leaves of the narcissus. Now you don't have to use sap green if you don't have it. You can use any of your bright yellows, lemon yellow, azo yellow, cadmium yellow, and you can mix them with cobalt blue or with ultramarine blue to make a green, or you can mix them with viridian green to make a green or hooker's green. You can get this lovely yellowy sap green with any of those mixes, just as long as you use a lot of nice bright yellow. This will be my first coat and to darken the green leaves and stems I will add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that green mix to put some shadows on them. This is sort of a very small detailed painting. A lot of sort of dry brush, not much wet in wet. Very controlled. If you like to do something that's fairly controlled. This is um, yellow ochre. You can use yellow ochre or raw sienna for the first layer on the bulb, on the narcissus bulb, and to paint a little bit of the shadow on the root. And I got a little hair there. I'm trying to pick up. It's very annoying when you get a piece of eraser or hair on your painting. You can't get it out of there. So I'm adding burnt sienna to the edges, wet in wet, to make that bulb look three-dimensional and round. And I'm blending some of that burnt sienna up into the leaves to make it darker where it comes out of the bulb. I'm taking burnt sienna and cobalt blue, making a much darker gray-brown to add some shadow to the root area and some shadow to the bulb. Very small brush. I have a number two brush so that I can really get in there with the detail. And now I have some water on the brush to spread that shadow out down into the roots. When I'm finished painting this painting, I'm going to use a Pigma fine tip pen in 01 size to outline and pick up all the detail. Sometimes I do that before I paint it. It really doesn't matter if you do it before you paint or after. Now the Narcissus 
is uh, a white narcissus and I'm going to use some um, I'm trying to think of the name of the the yellow gamboge gamboge yellow for the center of the narcissus and um, a little bit on the roots too I like to echo the colors I use I like to echo them somewhere else in the painting and there really doesn't need to be much else done to the narcissus I'm adding some raw sienna and some azo yellow and I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on the petals of the narcissus not not too much you don't want to lose that lovely white and if I use the black pen later it will make it stand out more now I have some cobalt blue and some raw sienna to make a sort of steely gray color for the trowel and I'm going to put that on dark at the edges and then I will use some water to spread that out and lighten it. I don't want it all to be dark. I want it to look like a metal trowel that's reflecting the light. And in the center of the trowel, the metal is raised up. So I will paint that bit later. Let's paint around it for now. And of course, all watercolor will lighten as it dries. So sometimes people are very scared of the dark color when they put it down and they'll mop it all up and dab it out and, and then it becomes very very wishy-washy just wait till it's dry and it will be much much lighter and not anywhere near so scary as when you first put it on the paper I've got some cerulean blue that always gives a steely look to steel and it's lovely for shadows I'm going to go around the narcissus petals to make them stand out a little bit with a very very light blue wash. Now these inks that I have used for the border are water soluble so I need to be really careful that I don't wet them too much. I've already wet them a little bit because I wanted a sort of watery blended look but I'm being really careful to avoid them. It does, if you notice, it really does make the narcissus stand out a little bit more. Now I just have raw sienna on the other side. I don't want it to be all the same blue. I want to vary that and I don't want it to be too dark either. I'm really adding a lot of water with this cerulean blue for the background color and I'm blending it in with a wet brush so that it's not too intense. I've been trying different positions with my camera so I'm actually painting upside down where I'm sitting so that the camera has it the right way up. I found if I had it the other side, I was continually knocking the camera as I painted. Now back in the raw sienna, so that I have a different color and then a little bit of permanent rose, very diluted, but I'm going to do the boots green. So the rose will be a complementary color that will make the green boots stand out. And a little bit around the trail. So now I'm gonna mix a green for the boots. I have Hooker's Green Dark, and I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue with that to darken it up and paint the first layer. You could, if you want, if you want your boots a little bit brighter, you can add some yellow. I've just done that. You can't see that. It's a little bit off, off camera, but I added a little bit of yellow. I wanted the green to be a bit brighter. And of course, if you paint right over the top of your masking fluid, it will be fine. You can erase that at the very end and you'll have little white polka dots on your boots. I'm going to let this first boot dry before I paint the second boot. That will give me a crisp line between the two. I could paint them both at once and then put shadow on later, but this way is a little bit more controlled for me. I've added burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to make a darker shadow for the bulb, adding that to the outside with a little bit of detail with the small number two brush and a little bit more detail for the roots and I've stuck my fist into my wet boot there, it's something I have to be really careful of. And if I wasn't painting on camera I would have turned my paper so that I, that didn't happen and I would have probably dried it too. I'm adding a little bit of cadmium red to the flower. 
And of course, don't forget that I have speeded this video up to twice the speed, so I do not paint this fast, and you shouldn't try to. I put a little bit of cerulean blue on the trowel to make it look more like metal. And the first layer of the wood was raw sienna. I will be coming in with burnt sienna in just a moment to give the handle of the trowel some shading, just exactly the same way I did the bulb. A little more fiddling with those roots, getting some shadow in there. Now this is where I've added some ultramarine blue to the green to give the leaves a little bit more shadow and definition. A little bolder color. And remember with watercolor, you build these colors up in layers. You let one layer dry and then you put another layer and then let that dry and put another layer. And that's the way you get your lovely intense deep colors with all your other colors behind and shining through. I'm going to try and fix up that mess I made with my hand. I put some ultramarine blue with the dark green and I'm going to put some darker shadows on the back of the boot. And that will disguise the mess I made with my hand. Now I'm going to make some blackish color. I've got permanent rose, I have burnt sienna, I've got ultramarine blue and I'm making a color that when it's on the bottom of the boot will look black. It may not look black in my palette, but trust me, when you put it on the paper, it will. And if it's if it lightens after it dries, you do a second layer. That will make it twice as dark. I do not like to buy black paint. I find it has a very dead look. Whereas you mix a beautiful black like that with three or four colors, always look vibrant. Especially if you use colors that you've already used in your painting. I'm just washing back a highlight on the boot, a little bit of water and then dab with a paper towel and it'll make the toes of the boots a little lighter. I'm going to use my Pigma pen in zero one size to do my outlining of all the details and I've also got some lettering there. Now you don't have to do hand lettering you can use stamps. There's all kinds of really nice sayings that you can get on rubber stamps or these papers, the Cartabella papers that I'm using also have lots of beautiful sayings that you can cut out and glue to your painting. So I'm just finishing up the the lettering and I've made sure that I've put lines there to keep my lettering even. I will erase those before I finish the whole painting. So now I'm putting the mask back on because when I finished this I decided I needed some pink in my background so I've gone to that worn lipstick and a different stamp with a tiny, this is a tiny little leaf pattern. And I'm just printing that in between the green. It looks messy now, but it will be fine when I take all the mask off. And I like that, it, it gives the compliments, the pink and green compliments, and brightens up the composition. Especially with that little tiny bit of permanent rose and raw sienna that I put beside the boots in the background. And I've got a lovely bright green pen that I actually got from Dollarama. It's not, not a special pen. And I'm going to go around the lettering with some green just to make it stand up. <laughs> 